Hi, my name is Jack, and this is the story of my calendar year Triple Crown hike, a nine and a half month journey along the Appalachian, Pacific Crest, and Continental Divide trails. It takes most hikers four to six months to complete just one of these trails, but I must complete all three before December 31st. To put the challenge into perspective, more people have been to the moon than have completed a calendar year Triple Crown. It is Wednesday, February 16th. 7.52 a.m. I am at the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail here at Springer Mountain. It's kind of cold, a lot of clouds today. It's supposed to be rain tomorrow. Um, this is the official start of the calendar year Triple Crown. And of course, the Appalachian Trail being the Appalachian Trail, it rained a lot. And then it kept raining and then it snowed, and then it rained some more, and then it snowed a lot more. The wind right now is blowing this freezing rain right into my eyes, and it's actually, it hurts. So it's really hard to see, because it's like getting stabbed with a thousand little, uh, I don't know, balls of ice in your eyeballs. And it sounds weird, but I really enjoyed all of this ice and snow and rain because it made it feel like an adventure. It made it feel like a real challenge. It wasn't just a walk in the woods. It was kind of battling the elements and pushing my limits. And that was really what drove me on the calendar year Triple Crown. I wanted to push my limits. I wanted to see how far I could really go. I wanted to have a grand adventure. And the AT was proving to fulfill all of that, especially when I got up north and hit the real snow. Post trolling through the snow really sucks. There's just no sugar coating it. It's awful, it's slow, and it takes effort going uphill, going downhill, going on the flats. Wow, it's so beautiful. But what's even worse was dealing with all of the sheets of ice, the sheer just sheets of unending ice that was throughout New Hampshire. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Covered. I think it's time for some glissading. Jesus. <laughs> ah, yeah. Holy cow. This is incredible. My God, it is hard. I, some of this stuff, uh, it's, I'm too tired to pull my camera out for all of these things. Well, apparently I'm too tired to talk, but it, uh, it's like surprising me that I'm able to make it up. Now, this spot, I need to, both my hands to get up here. But, wow, how incredible. It's uh, windy and cold, but not nearly as bad as it was yesterday. But wow, this is so cool. Like, hardly any AT hikers get to see this view. Uh, so my God. What an adventure. I'll tell you what, this will be for sure probably some of the hardest, wow. most difficult thing that I ever do in my life. I hope so. I don't know how it gets hard. It's 
He's so good, I pulled out the tripod. That doesn't happen very often. This is so amazing. What a beautiful sunset. I still can't get over that I came over all of that today, this morning. This has really been the absolute perfect day. Look at this view. Enjoying it with a nice Reese's cup. This is a hiker named Paul slipping and sliding through the ice. He was also on a mission to complete a calendar year triple crown. No, no, I'm putting my micro spikes on is what I'm doing. That's what's happening right now. Holes just fell right there and took a chunk out of his hand. Which I shouldn't laugh at you because I'm probably gonna fall again. I can't even sit down anymore. Fucking shit. So I've been backing down the slopes using both hands, jab these in the ice. Plant my feet, take a step down, and uh, go down further. This place, I could use an ice axe. It's stuff like this, you can use an ice axe, but uh, it's all right. And if you fall, at least there's trees to stop you. This part's probably best done. With several points of contact. But yeah. My spikes are digging in pretty well. Mahusik Notch was absolutely awful. It's probably the worst time to go through because it was warm enough that the snow was starting to melt, but there was still a ton of snow and ice on the ground, so I was having to look out and try not to fall in those deep holes, and you really don't know where they are with the snow. Damn sketchy. This is... Do you see how far in I am? I guess maybe put snowshoes back on and then just trying to navigate the big boulders with the ice and the snow. And at one point I actually slipped and fell and hit my head because the ice underneath me broke away. So this piece of ice just completely slid out from here to there and I fell, hit my head on that piece of ice, it broke. Um, I don't know if I'm bleeding or not. I have a nice little bruise there. I'm ready to be done with this shit. This is so dangerous. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty long, pretty long, terrible day. And then having to hike up the Mahusik arm with all the ice that night. That Ooh, day, it took me 20 cold. hours to walk 16 oh. miles. And I got in like at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. Let me show you my bleeding before the water washes it all off. I finally made it to the 100 mile wilderness. And at this time, Mount Katahdin was still closed. Baxter was still closed to hikers. So it's going to be a pretty anticlimactic finish, finishing there at Abel Bridge. So I decided to try and push through 100 miles as quickly as I could. Wow. Ended up taking about yeah. two and a half days, sleeping three to four hours each of those nights. So it's 2.10 a.m. I'm going to set up camp here. It's actually getting pretty cold. Tomorrow night will be much lower elevation and should be warmer temperatures. Hundred mile wilderness is not easy. Oh, these first like 35, 40 miles are the hardest. And it was pretty terrible. I think there's about 12 or 13,000 feet of gain in the first 40 miles of the 100 mile wilderness going northbound. So that's equivalent to doing a rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon. Uh, 
Uh, it's about midnight. I need to let my feet dry out a little bit. They're starting to, don't have blisters yet, but I can feel, feel them. Cause they've been wet for like 30 hours now. It's just soaked. And so I also need to charge my headlamp, charge my phone and just rest, you know, tired. Um, See if I can get a view of Katahdin. There she is. I'm getting goosebumps. This is a totally different experience to see a northbound. It was cool. I had a good time. Did a lot of did a lot of chilling <laughs> by the lakes. After finishing at Abel Bridge, it was on to a plane and out to the west coast. I have made it. It is the southern terminus of the PCT. And look at this beautiful, beautiful sunset. So excited. It was a shock to the system to go from Maine to the blistering deserts of Southern California. My memories of this first stretch are just unrelenting sun, unrelenting heat, and getting terrible blisters because of all the sand and dust on Gone the trail. Like one or two miles already needing to dump crap out of my shoes. And this is wearing gaiters. But despite all of those challenges, I was so excited to be on the PCT. This was the trail that I was most looking forward to. And it was nice to hike this trail in a normal time and to be able to meet other hikers. This is Eagle Rocks. It actually looks like an eagle. We're just lying here and this massive snake going <laughs> just a half a meter away from my head. So um, I'm gonna move and find someone else to see it. <laughs> I still didn't see it. I highly like blind. Yes. So like if you see, so there's this big branch. See and where then your head piece was. And it's like blackish. Yep, yep, yep. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna move my shit slowly. <laughs> He's right down in there. I can just see his tail, I don't see the rest of him. Yeah. Huh. I met a great group of hikers at the Acton KOA and we would go on to finish the desert together. Wait, this is the video. You Kong, okay? Look. Jimmy Kong, thank you. Can you get it? Uh-huh. It's pretty dark. The temperatures were reaching well over 100 degrees during the day in the Mojave Desert, so we switched to a completely nocturnal schedule. <laughs> um. That can't be on camera. <laughs> like, oh, well, we hiked from 5 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next day and managed to cover the 200 miles from Acton to Ridgecrest in about five days. You guys look so tired. Recording. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, we would try to sleep wherever we could, like this little gas station in Green Valley, but mostly, you really couldn't sleep. You just could kind of rest, and at the end of the five days, we were very sleep deprived and pretty delirious. I've actually got a lot of energy right <laughs> The 
highlight of the stretch was painting ourselves with body paint in Hiker Town, dressing like Mad Max characters, and then hiking the 40 yeah. some odd miles from Three, there to two, Dehashi one, Peak. Go. Go. <laughs> this is the infamous pipe. Woohoo, pipe! <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures of it, it really. <laughs> Kennedy Meadows, population 200. Hey, oh, Make oh, them think they're oh, not gonna oh, get it. The Grumpy Burger. But, but uh, does it have mozzarella sticks? Okay. <laughs> what do you have? Yeah. Oh. Tablets? No, I've got the micro. Same I feel like that's a pretty nice woman. My name is just a paper. I'm too shy. <laughs> Sleep on the dick. You want to sleep on the dick? <laughs> the dick looks nice. It's a big dick. You think you can eat all that, Miles? Oh, easily. As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, and my time with my friends had to come to an end in Kennedy Meadows. I left them and hiked out while everybody else took some well deserved zeros. Oh, my first bear this trip. Oh, yeah, look at him. It's a pretty good sized bear. Think of how much it would cost to camp in a place like this if our public lands were privatized. As I entered the Sierras proper, I was greeted by a mixture of freezing rain and snow. This was actually the coldest I've gotten on the trail the entire year because my gear loadout was built for the summer and not for a winter storm and I had to set up my tent in the middle of the day because I was becoming hypothermic. <laughs> Everybody's still in their tents. It's about 1 p.m. Another reminder that everything is impermanent. The snow passed and I got the most amazing snow-capped views of the High Sierra route. Woo! Oh my God. Do you see this? Look at this. Just 360. <laughs> I am so, so happy right now. Fun fact, my camera kit weighs the same as about one and a half bear cans, so I carried an extra one and a half bear cans through the entire damn calendar year Triple Crown. And every one of these shots, I have to walk back and pick the camera back up. All right, what's, who's cutting onions up here, Retune? <laughs> I don't know, it's just, uh, it's so beautiful. I was just having a real emotional moment up here. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. Wow. The PCT is just so beautiful and I want to show you every mountain and every sunset and every stream and every waterfall, but I am just running out of time on this documentary. So here's just a couple of the highlights and now on to the end of the PCT. Want a lot. You like this tree? So much. <laughs> you should come hug it too. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Everything is wet. Why do we do this? <laughs> My backpack's wet, the bottom of my tent's wet, my sleeping pad's wet, my sleeping bag's wet, everything's wet. <laughs> Crater Lake. Holy shit, this fire is way closer to the trail than I thought it was. That is, might as well be on the trail. This is Bridge of the Gods, 
crossing into Washington. There's no shoulder, and you can see straight down, <laughs> hundreds of feet. Two miles from the border. Here we are, northern terminus. Here's the monument, here's the border marker, and then Canada's on this way. And it's been raining pretty hard. It's just, just stopped, so that's nice, I guess. After wow. finishing two trails, I was pretty tired and kind of over hiking, but I continued on to the CDT to finish the last leg of the Triple Crown. As I started the CDT, I found myself comparing everything with my hike in 2018. My first CDT hike was the favorite through hike I've ever been on because of the scenery, the people, and the amazing sense of hey, adventure. Hey, fat little guy. What are you doing? They got their daily salt content. Uh, Is he still looking at you? Yeah. <laughs> you like that, buddy? He's done this before. You know what? I'm just going to pee right here. Hey, gather. I found this to be largely missing. I was mostly alone on the trail. I found I was just kind of going through the motions and then the lighting was different. There was a lot of smoke from wildfires. So the lighting was this kind of gray, weak lighting along with the changing of the seasons. I just found myself to be not really invested in the hike and kind of just going through the days because I had to go through the days. And also because I had started this trail late and was trying to beat the snow in Colorado, I had to take every alternate, so I had to skip most of the really scenic, really adventurous sections, and that also didn't feel good. I've been up there. That big, the main peak? The, the big one. What's it called? It's called the Grand Tison. How'd you get up there? I climbed it. <laughs> my dad and my brothers. There's a bear right there. I think that's the young grizzly. Hey bear, hey buddy. So I'm back at Abel Bridge. Flew all day yesterday, got into Boston at midnight. Friend Blake from uh, Fire Crew picked me up. We drove all night. It's now 8 a.m. Uh, whatever time, Eastern time. And gonna go climb Katahdin. So this is the elevation profile for the last five miles. 4,183 feet up in 5.2 miles. It's not like Quadzilla hikes guy. What are you doing over here? <laughs> You're supposed to be doing the, the Continental Divide right now. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> that was what I needed. Just have some time to sit there and take it all in and be and reflect. Going through the AT and the snow and the ice, literally bleeding every day, getting cut. pushing so hard. And that's the end of it. The end of the AT. That was a proper, proper end. It's nice to take it all in, just in silence. 
really feel the weight of this this terminus because the AT is by far so much harder this year than any other of the other trails. So much effort and blood and sweat. So that was the right conclusion for the trail. The leaves are starting to change. I am tired and my knees hurt. God, the AT is such, so hard on your body. It's 2.30 in the morning. I'm back at the Boston airport. Summited Katahdin this afternoon. Drove all night. Now I'm back so I can fly early tomorrow morning. This is lucky I've all my camping gear. The trail was pretty uneventful through the rest of Montana and into Wyoming. I got the first little bit of snow in the Wind River Range and I definitely started to feel the weather turn cold. This added a sense of urgency to my hike because I knew any day now Colorado could see a big dump of snow and that could make the trail impassable. Pretty gross day. Definitely the right decision to not uh, go to freaking circuit the towers and trying to be messed with this stuff up at like 10, 11,000 feet trying to go over those passes. This is really fun. The log from 2018 is still here. So there's Groucho. Um, we met him and went into Leadville and now he runs the Leadville um, southbound trail days in there. And here's flyby. 10 by 10, 20 by 2, 30 by 6. I'm so happy who did um, this So, you know, we, I hiked with flyby for 1,900 miles, and then here's my entry. Uh, I said I'm really excited to get to Rollins for the Thai Buffet. I distinctly remember how much of a pain in the ass it was to climb Greys and Tories and then traverse over to that 13,000 footer right next to them. So this time I did not do that. Instead I took the Silver Thorn alternate which was nice and cruisy and so much better. It looks really cool though. I had such good luck with the weather in Colorado until I got into Salida. It snowed about a foot overnight with another foot coming down a few days later. And as luck would have it, I ran into one of the last southbound through hikers and we were able to push through this stretch together, which added a real sense of safety and comfort to an otherwise arduous and very difficult journey. Hey, I'm uh, Rike Tolkmit from Germany. My trail name is Walkie Talkie. I don't have a walkie talkie and I'm not talking all the time, <laughs> but because of my last name, Tolkmit. Yeah. Here's the snowmobile cabin. It's opened for hikers to use. Let's go on now. Wow. We would trudge through snow like this, averaging one to one and a half miles an hour all the way to Cuba, New Mexico. But as difficult as this was, I loved it. This rekindled my spirit and my thirst for adventure. This felt like a real challenge. This felt like something new. It was beautiful. 
This is why I was out here. I was here to push my limits and test myself. At the freaking top. 12,600 feet. It's probably about 10 degrees right now. Brutally hard. Beautiful. What do you think, walkie talkie? Oh my god, it was so hard. But it's so close. Beauty and brutality. Woo! Embrace the brutality. That's the CDT's slogan. So that was more satisfying than any of the terminuses I've been to on any trail so far. Four straight hours of climbing up that shit. Yeah, that's pretty satisfying. God damn, it's cold on this side with the wind. Hopefully, drop down and get out of this wind. Be careful too, because this is pretty steep. So these traverses are pretty steep. You gotta be real careful not to slide all the way to the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> that was fun. The snow was really relentless and we thought maybe once we get into New Mexico it'll get better but it just kept snowing and snowing in New Mexico. It was less steep but you're still post holing through snow every step. Okay, now the snow is kind of deep. If it's like this, we're in trouble. Any thoughts on New Mexico? I hope it's getting warmer <laughs> and less snow. Yeah, but happy to, to yeah, go all the, did it to the fifth state. Okay, cut this off. <laughs> <laughs> Blowdowns and snow. Terrible combination. All things are impermanent and so was the snow. Eventually we made it into the desert and the miles flew by after that. Here it is. I am done. Monument. Go ahead and walk to Mexico. This little beat up fence right here is Mexico. And my arm is in Mexico. <sighs> Did it. Done. Pretty surreal feeling. Um, not the finish that I was expecting, because Marvel is supposed to meet me out here. Um, but the ride they're with, she's with, I guess they took the wrong road, so they gotta go all the way back and then come out on the right route, which is like hour and a half, two hour drive by itself. So I'm just gonna start walking down this dirt road. Just not the finish I was expecting. 
or I guess it didn't, yeah, didn't meet my expectations for getting here. It's much different than the reality just because You know, nobody's here and I gotta keep walking. <laughs> there's no ride and there's no water, there's no food. So I gotta figure out water. Uh, I think there's a cache two miles back, but I'm completely out right now because didn't plan on walking more. Uh, I can't even hang out here because no water. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is the end. But that's the trail. It's not about, you know, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey along the way. This is just an arbitrary endpoint. And uh, yeah, I'm sure give it a lot of time to process this whole year. Just haven't had enough downtime to think through it all yet, but uh, take some pictures and get out of here. <laughs>